Hello everybody, welcome once again. My name is Akin Fish and we are here treating the water treatment plant. Alright, so um, you can see the cylinder behind us. We have, um, we have some complaints in the farm. We have looked at it, we've done a test and we are about to start treating it. So um, we're going to take some water samples and we'll show you how we conduct our test of our water samples. So please come along with me. Once again, my name is Akin Fish and I'm going to be telling you what you need to conduct a proper water treatment process in your farm, all right? So come along with me, I'll show you. Great, so don't forget what I told you, um, that we will first take the water parameters of the water so that we can then see what we need to correct in the water. And this does not, and regardless of wherever the water source is, it can be from a bowl, it can be from a well, it can be from a river. So let me also tell you, right, they are, these waters, from experience, they have different characteristics. So water from a bowl is usually free of physical matters, all right? Because it's from the rock, right? It's usually clean. Um, it's usually clean. The water is usually clean, all right? But then it can maybe have a little iron. It can, so maybe when you see your water, it has brown color on it. It's because it has iron content. Or if you cannot bath with it and the water cannot lather, the soap cannot lather well, that means it's hard, all right? So you can tell, at least, water from a bowl does not have a lot of physical content. It's usually just like the iron and the hardness that we're trying to correct, all right? Um, water from a well, however, because it is from, it's from the surface, it usually has a high bacterial load, all right? It has high organic matter because it's still water that seeps from the soil, not necessarily clean water from um, the ground. So um, the water from a bowl might not necessarily have high organic content or high biological content, but the water from a well can be clean it can also have physical matters, most especially if the pumping machine is um, sucks from the bottom of the well, maybe the well, the well exhausts some time, all right? And then it can also have like a strong bacterial load and organic content, so that's for a well. Then water from a river usually has like high physical matters, all right? High physical parameters, that means it's usually murky, muddy, there is sand there in. Not sand that you can touch because it went through a pumping machine, but at least um, like like you see that the water is a little brownish, all right? So that's because it has sand particles that are easily dissolved that are inside it. So when we come, normally I like to take like two or three tests of the water samples. I'll take the first one, I'll ask them to pump the water away, then we'll do another water test so that we can see the consistency of water, all right? So we have some of these test kits that we use to take our water parameters. So you can see this test strip box with me, all right? It has 100 strips. Alright, so most if our arteries, arteries like to have at least one of these, alright? So it has 100 test strips and it tests for different materials. So we test for ammonia, alright? We test for nitrates, um, two types of nitrates. Then it can test for iron, iron content. It can test for water hardness. It can test for the total alkalinity of water and it can also test for water pH. So, I mean, once you have this in your place, you can do your water test and know what's up. And then here, alright? We also have another test kit that I personally use. Um, it has the general hardness and also has carbonate hardness test, which this does not have, all right? So with this, you can also test for other water parameters because this depends on if you are using it for a fish farm or a poultry. The last video I shared with you was on a fish farm. And if you say, oh, okay, you know that all those other things are, are perfect. This here is a test kit for only water pH, all right? So this, this is the one that uses like a drop, all right, the drop. And the test kit so we have these test kits to make sure that we can adequately verify what exactly is wrong with the water so i'm going to show you a video of us doing it doing the tests to identify what the water parameters are and then next i'm going to show you the different materials that we use to correct the water all right great so um come along with me let me show you the different materials that we use to correct the water but as i've said we first do the water parameter test that's the first thing so that we know what we are correcting all right, so come along with me, let me show you what we're doing. Great. Great. So, for your water treatment um, test, you forget there are like three different um, parameters that you are treating in water. There's the number one, the physical parameter, number two, the chemical parameter, and number three, the biological parameter, all right? So the physical parameter, I've mentioned that that physical parameter will not be too uh, much if you are using like a bowl of water, all right? Because the water is clean, all right? It's white, it's clean, all right? But if the water was murky, then you probably want to use like activated carbon, which is like charcoal, all 
all right which is charcoal it's sold in bags or as activated carbon because those ones are like sterilized all right but basically some some people even just use charcoal like literal charcoal that is in small lumps all right so it cleans water all right and it makes water clearer that's for charcoal all right after that you then have sand media so the sand media is literal sand that has been sterilized and burned all right um goes for about maybe one thousand and a half bag thereabouts um i'm not sure i wanted to give you prices in this position but uh, in this in this video but um we have different sizes of the of the of the um sand media so we have the one mm two mm three mm four mm and this respective sizes also dictate their sizes all right so one mm is smaller than two mm smaller than three mm smaller than four mm we put this in our water treatment regardless of the type of water treatment however as i mentioned it's probably more appropriate or you need more volume of it if you are dealing with like a river water or like a or a well water right for a bowl you just need maybe one bag of each so that because i mean the water is clean all right it's just the chemical properties you want to correct so after thinking about the fiscal properties so that's so if you see in our two cylinders the first one will probably load it with like sand properties so that once the water is clean of any physical properties we then treat the chemical part right so for the chemical part we have different things we use so let me start with calcite right. i'm trying to show you the calcite all right so calcite is like big grains of salt all right but what it does is it neutralizes low ph or acidic water all right it balances the ph out all right now don't forget one some of the so let's say we are treating the hardness of water and we use resin, all right? What it does is that it will now raise the pH of the water because it's a chemical on its own. So some of these things, it's like you are cooking. Oh, you use this to bring down the hardness. But because you brought down the hardness with resin, it has increased the pH. You now have to balance the pH back. Do you get that? So the water will pass through resin first, then it will pass through um, calcite to bring out the pH. So you've corrected the hardness and then you've corrected the water pH. Do you get that? So when you are doing this water treatment, it's like you are cooking. Oh, let me put a little of this, put a little of this to bring it out. So I've shown you calcite. Now this is resin. All right? This is resin. It's usually like, like powder. It's, it's smallish inside, very, very soft to the touch, all right? But resin brings down the hardness and um, the iron content of water, all right? Great. And then we have um, the zeolite. All right, we have the zeolite. All right, so there are different types of zeolite. This one here is synthetic zeolite. All right, this one is synthetic zeolite, and it removes ammonia and iron from the water. So if they've said, ah, your water has ammonia, then you probably know that you will get zeolite in your water treatment. All right, and then the next is the agdolite. All right, this is it. Agdolite. Agdolite increases the pH of water. All right? Great. Now, this resin I mentioned, all right, there are two types of resin actually. There is the resin anion and there is the resin cation. The resin cation increases the hardness of water. All right? If your water is soft, the resin cation increases it. No, if your water is very hard, the resin anion reduces it. So they say resin, resin, which of the resins are you needing? You understand? That's what affects that. Then we also have dolomite that reduces the pH if your water is, uh, is acidic. We have magnadol and then we have um, the sand media that I mentioned. So great. And then the last one I should mention is the microfilter. All right. So we have this as a microfilter, all right? And it actually traps like bacteria um, particles, all right? So this we use for biological treatment, all right? So there are two different types. There's the micro and there's the macro, all right? That's the container, the cartridge inside. It's called a cartridge. This thing inside is called a cartridge. So we have the micro and the macro. And the micro is able to trap more bacterial components than the macro water filtration. So yes, I've run you through some of the materials we use. Once again, those are the complements you need. Maybe what I will do also, maybe I'll try to see if I can snap like the pictures of it and post it in each of, in as I was mentioning each of them so that you can see what it is, all right? But basically, once you have all of this, we will then load the water treatment up and then when we are done, we can then test the water again and see that we have corrected what was missing, all right? So depending on if you're a fish, farm or you are a poultry farm each of these livestock need different things 
in water, all right? For instance, now, a, 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 a fish needs uh, more, a, a fish needs to be in a balanced pH of seven, all right? Between seven and eight, it's fine for fish. Um, if it comes down, it's immediately harmful for fish. But for poultry, if it comes down, it might not necessarily, or hardness of water might not necessarily affect them as much as a fish. So depending on whatever your farm is, we can then advise that, oh, okay, these are the water parameters you probably want to target, all right? So once again, my name is Akin Fish. As, I'm sh as, I, as I told you earlier, I'm always sharing all of the active things I'm doing on respective farms and on my farm as well, so that you can learn and also be blessed by it. So thank you once again. Hope, hope this helped you in any way. Make sure you like my YouTube channel and subscribe. And if you have any other questions as regards water treatment, please ask in the comment section below. My name again is Akin Fish. Bye. So we're about to load the chemicals in the water treatment now.